Welcome back. So let's just try and look at a scenario right here where we are going to ask for some data. Now, I've made a small envelope down here just to kind of represent transferring data. And let's say that we have a web application here, and that could be pretty much any application, um, something, a client inside a browser, like let's just, for instance, say Google right here. Let's just go to google.com and say, I want to look for cheese, right? Cheese is good. So Google actually goes and grabs some information right here. Now, what actually happens is they made an HTTP request to the backend and got some information back. So let's try and represent the same thing. So this is going to be your, at some point, your desktop, uh, sorry, your web application right here. Now what you're going to do is you're going to have an envelope right here and then what you're going to do is you're going to make an HTTP request, okay? So an HTTP request pretty much just means that you want to send something, you want to ask for some information from somewhere on the web. Now you have to know a bit about what you're looking for. You have to know where you're sending or asking for the data, right? Like in this case, I know that I need data from Google somewhere, so I can send a request for Google. It's pretty much, if you send a letter, what do you need? You need the address. You need where is this going, right? So we're going to add an address, which is an IP address. So let's just, for the fun of it right now, just add a, a simple IP address right here. And this is definitely not the right one. Let's just say one, one, two, three. This is an IP address or something like, a, it could also be a domain. Let's put in domain instead. It could be like, I wanna go to google.com. That's where I need to kind of find some information. So that's my address where I need to go. I'm also putting in a sender's address. Where is this coming from? And maybe in my case, instead of actually coming from Google, I might be sending this request for somewhere else. Let's just say my local machine, uh, just to kind of, it has an IP, of course, it has a specific, specific address, but this is the sender, this is where it's coming from, right? So I need to also put that in an envelope, right? Maybe I also need to send some extra information to the guys, but this is the beginning. This is what I need. Here's the sender. Here is the, uh, sorry, here's the, the guy that I want to go to, and here's the, the sender of the envelope. So what I'm going to do next is actually I'm going to send this envelope over the wire. This is what I call an HTTP request right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this envelope right here, and I'm going to send it over the internet. Now out here, there are people who knows where to go. They say, okay, you need to go to Google. Well, luckily, I know where Google is. So I'll just like a postman, I'll send it over the wire all the way to Google, right? So I'll say, there we go. I know you need to go over here. And this is, let's just play around with this being Google. So now Google is receiving this um, envelope right here. Now Google says, okay, sweet. So I'm just going to figure out what this guy wants. In this case, he wants a list of cheese. Okay, let's give him a list of cheese. And I know where he's coming from. I know who's actually sending this. So I will take the list of cheese. Let's just get rid of that for now. I'll take the list of cheese. Let's just make one called list of cheese just to make it easy. List cheese, there we go. I'll take the list of cheese and I'll send it back to this guy because that's definitely what he wants. So I'll just add that inside the envelope, uh, inside something called the body. We'll get back to that. So now we pretty much have what we call a response ready right here from, uh, in our case, Google or whatever we're looking for. And we'll send that back over the wire right here in the envelope. And then we know where to go. We know we need to go to this local machine or that's of course also a specific address uh, that you have for your specific machine right now. So we know we have to go to that specific um, client right here and then he can unwrap my data, the list of cheese, and then display it something like this is the results that you got back, right? So pretty amazing. That's how ATP requests work. They know a lot more than what I just showed you and let me just try and show you some more information right here. But this is kind of the general idea. We have somebody that we want to send the data to. We are sending a request for that guy. We explain who we are so we can send, he can send something back to us. We explain when we get returned, we put something in the body so he can get some data back. You know what? Let's actually show this with a live example. So let's just try and add something called developer tools right here. Now developer tools, you can open those by actually clicking up here and saying settings. I'm in Chrome, by the way, saying more tools and developer tools right here. And then this guy will pop up. There's also a shortcut right here. And there's also a shortcut for the windows. I think it's control shift I here. It's command shift I. So actually what will happen? Let me just try and clear. I pick network right here. 
and I remove everything, this might be showing, just hide it. And what's going to happen is as soon as I do a refresh right here, you'll see something being sent. Okay, a lot of things are happening right here, but let's just focus on the first line right here, this guy. I'm sending something to the backend, right? So if we go back to our example, what just happened is I created this, I wanna send something to Google right here. So I created the envelope and I'm preparing to send it to Google. So if you look at what we have here, this is the headers for my request. So you just learned a new word there. HTTP requests have headers. Now we're sending a header with information about where to go, right? So here you'll notice this is for google.dk and they have a huge list of information that we are passing over to know that we're actually looking for cheese right here. What else? Well, we're also sending something called the get request. We'll get back to that in the next lesson. We're sending it with a, we're getting a state of code back and here's the actual remote address, right? So we know where we're going now. We're also setting some response headers so we can also get our way find our way back to where we're actually coming from. So there's a lot of, this is a huge set of information that we end up sending to the backend to get some reply later on, right? Now, when we're actually done uh, reading this, we will hopefully get reply back from uh, Google. And that's actually the response you see right here. So this is what Google returned to me and that's actually the page you're looking at right here.